Many fans are extremely excited to see another historical film being released in theaters. This next one is about a spectacle-filled action epic that details the checkered rise and fall of the iconic French Empire, Napoleon Bonaparte, played by Oscar winner Joaquin Phoenix. Today we're going to take you behind the scenes and set with some of the creators and cast of this film and take you on the journey through what it was like putting this film together. Ready and back on action, action! But before we get into more of these moments, today's trivia question, Joaquin Phoenix is better known for his role as the Joker from 2019, but what was his first film role? Leave your guesses in the comments down below and stick around to the end of the video to find out if your answer was correct. I never had more than 100 horses in the field. On those big days, I'd have 300 men, but what you see finally is 20,000 horses. And so that's organization but it means everyone's blood is up and you there's marvelous bits you get because you're actually reconstructing the real thing of course this film is loosely based in 1973 amid the french revolution with napoleon bonaparte it was late 2020 that ridley scott announced that project napoleon previously titled kitbag would direct and produce from a screenplay written by Scott's All the Money in the World from 2017 collaborator David Scarpa. The film's working title was derived from Bonaparte's quote, every French soldier carries a marshal's baton in their knapsack. You know what this is? Napoleon's hat? Nobody knows. These are objects people find and they put them up there <laughs> and they say, yeah, yeah. But that, look at this one. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Never, never quite looks the same. <laughs> when we look at all the people involved, 300 men and horses and all of the equipment to make the bombs and cannons, this movie really was at a large scale. Action. We came up upon that in talking incessantly about who and what he might be, because Joaquin was trying to focus on, yeah, but how does he walk? How does he think? How does he sit? We just kept looking at portraits, and the portraits are fantastic. We sit down with Vanessa Kirby to discuss improvisation on the film for certain scenes like the breakfast scene. Definitely, because Ridley shoots with multiple cameras, it's very fast, you might do a couple of takes and then you're on to the next scene and pull you underneath, even though they just had that very difficult conversation. And I imagine she must have felt so fragile. To laugh in spite of how you feel, felt weirdly true somehow. Ridley Scott chimes in on this and gives his reaction to seeing an actor do this mid-filming. I can understand how it can be difficult, especially in some movies like this one. And that Waterloo battle scene took almost comic book form before the cameras rolled. The storyboards, he says, are what convinced investors to back his movies. That's the power of a storyboard because the board... On the basis of, what, of the storyboard? On the board, the, the budget doubled. Hmm. They went, wow. The film features six major battle sequences. Unlike Waterloo, in 1970, another film featuring Napoleon that focused on a single battle. Napoleon was shot under the working title, Marengo, a reference to the Battle of Marengo in 1800. We've done a lot of see-through mesh dresses which reveal most of the women um, and a very low cut and the maddest hats. I've had so much fun with the hats. Big flowers, big straw coming up here. But real quick, make sure you guys check out our Instagram page linked down in the description. There's a ton of interview moments and memes, so make sure you check it out and give us a follow. What I admire about Joaquim is that he comes in before everybody else 
when we come in early, before crew call even, um, to absorb the ambience of the, of the sets and the locations and just get in the feel of things. And he walked into this one set and he just simply said, amazing. That was his comment. Interestingly enough, director Scott Ridley revealed that there was an extended version of the film, a four-hour version, a whopping four-hour edition of his new Wakan Phoenix historical epic Napoleon, which will be released on Apple TV Plus after its current theatrical run. Making the actors comfortable to be able to work within them, the dresses, you know, and the, the looks for Vanessa, the royal military looks for Joaquin, you see all these soldiers walking these fields, running in these fields, battling each other on horseback. All of them have to have their costumes look right. Scott is really trying to tell two stories at once, which barely overlap. There is Napoleon, the shrewd commander, leading thousands of men into almost certain death in battle as he conquers a large part of the world. And then there is Napoleon the Lover, whose relationship to his wife, Josephine, turns out to be its own tumultuous game of one upmanship. What we're looking at here is not CGI. No, it's all real. I think you feel f when it's fake, when it's yeah, you, you know it's somehow artificial. All of this is real shooting. It's we shot Malta. this in Malta, which I've been there. Malta in a funny kind of way, is an architectural gem. Vanessa Kirby gets caught in an interview and gets asked about the film and praises Ridley Scott's role in the film and how he came about it all. He shoots in you know, maybe six cameras and you'll do a couple of takes because he captures it from every angle. So he says it's like theater because you can you know, shoot a scene and he'll capture every single image and then you can move on. So it's almost the opposite, really. He went to Malmaison. We went to, I went to see Josephine's tomb. It was such a privilege to learn about her. She was iconic. David Scarpa is responsible for writing this film and was asked about the challenges of writing a biopic like this, to which he responded, for us, it's difficult in 2023 to make what we call the prestige biopic like Gandhi, which is the soup to nuts grade school book report version of some great man's life. This is how the women dressed and the men were dandies beyond dandies with much longer pointed shoes, skinnier trousers, stripy, big stripy jackets. They were, they were in big hats. They were really quite extreme. It was an almost impossible story to tell, he continued, just in terms of the sheer sprawl of what Napoleon had done and his influence on European history. Right there, you see that down, that's, a that's an airport down below. That's, that's an airport. airport. Airfield, oh, right. and, but the wooden is married to the wooden foreground is where I shot Marks of Rilis and Gladiator. Oh, you, okay, this is where you shot the Gladiator? Same place, okay. Yeah. In 45 battles fought in essentially writing the Code Napoleon, which is the basis of much of continental European society. What I found myself most intrigued by was this little vision in the book about his relationship with Josephine, his wife. The beginning of the journey was reading everything I possibly could about Josephine. I locked myself away and just read every book I could about her. How could a man like this, who's on his way to take Moscow, to take Russia, be obsessed with what his, his wife is doing back in Paris? Of all the many takes that this film had to do and all the cast and crew involved, it looked like a fun time putting all of it together and having people like Loris Chevalier to be the his historical advisor, making sure the film is as historically accurate as possible, but changed enough for entertainment as it is still a film. We've recreated the Congress of Vienna. We've recreated the uh, guillotine square, chopped off a few heads, of course. And so there's a, a, an enormous amount of pageantry to do the revolution in this. It's a great big canvas. And as far as the answer to today's trivia question, Joaquin Phoenix's first film role was in 1985 as he played Frankie in Kids Don't Tell. It's not a job to him, it's him creating art. We have an 800 person crew, anywhere from four to 11 or 12 cameras. And so 
But working with a filmmaker that has a vision that's that clear, it makes it easier for Mark and I to function and provide what Ridley needs uh, for him. But we wanted to turn this around to you guys. What did you think about all these moments and what do you think about a lot of these kinds of historical films releasing recently instead of action? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on for more videos just like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys. This is an instant classic. This is an extraordinary scene on the, on the big screen, isn't it? With yes. The, so falling through the ice we cut the... a large area about the size of two swimming pools. You go in the tank at Pinewood and you shoot the stuff. In the okay, cupboard. okay. Digital, the, the, the cannonballs hitting the water, I love, that's digital. Yeah.